host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. I'm really excited and ecstatic to be joined by young blood here, JX Hines. Welcome, young man. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How you doing, everybody? Thank hey. you for having me. Good. Present so cool. So we always like to kind of go back to the beginning a little bit and just sort of plant that foundation. Just tell us a bit about sort of how you got into music and, and felt that it was your calling. Okay. Uh, so me just being a South Florida kid, I grew up in church. Uh, that was uh, my early origins to like just music and instrumentation. Um, I'm a drummer. Um, something like, you know, a lot of people don't know, but uh, music was just pretty much in my DNA, just coming from a family of singers and musicians. Um, and I just, those kind of shaped my early childhood. Um, and to what you guys kind of see now in the early phases of what's the beginning of now. So, you know, that uh, that bloodline of music runs deep. Absolutely. Who are some of those artists that inspired you? Some of the people that you may look up to today, but some of the people maybe from the past when you were growing up that you really felt like uh, they are the reason for me going into this? Um, well, the first musician I met vocalist wise was my father. Um, so that was, uh, you know, just my whole introduction to music in general. But uh, second to that, um, if I had to say a blast from the past, it was people like who inspired me. It was like Michael Jackson, you know, Outkast, Marvin Gaye, Miguel, Usher, Chris Brown, Trey, like list goes on. Um, you know, even that gospel world, you know, your your Kirk Franklin's, your Ty Tribbett. Yeah, man, I was just a music head. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just rattling, rattling off just some, some top people for sure. Yeah. One of the biggest things that is a challenge, there are so many, but is finding your voice, finding your genre, finding your sound. Just walk us through that process just a bit. I mean, not, you don't have to give all the secrets away, but just how did you, how did that process work for you? Um, uh, it's been a, it's been a journey from a standpoint of uh, self-development. It's been about a little bit over 10 years. Um, it's trial and error, just um, from the first, time me ever just really recording and um knowing what it was for my voice to um go over instrumentation um and hear myself in that way I fell in love with it um in my early college days and I kind of had a little makeshift studio in my um in my dorm rooms me and my friend and um we would just we would just kind of just record every chance we got you know between classes between practice and that's just kind of like once I figured out like, hey man, like this is like really something that could change my life and my family's life. Um, I just kind of took it serious and kept developing over time and over time. And, and you know, I look up now and I hear myself now and I realize just what it, where, where I started, you know, it, um, it shocks me sometimes. So um, it's just a testament to just trial and error and borrowing um, from different pages from others that were before me. Sure, no, absolutely. You come across as very modest and very sincere and also somebody who has been willing to put in the work. Talk to us about the intensity of that process of really kind of getting those first few steps and getting your legs underneath you to actually get songs done and get them released and, and what that really took in terms of just time, work, connections, and um, just really putting in uh, a tremendous effort because it's not something that just comes overnight. Right. Um, it's scary at first, um, just because it's nothing's guaranteed, you know, um, it don't matter how good you are, how, you know, how much work you may need, whatever, but, you know, none of it's guaranteed. So to get people to feel what you felt when you first kind of record these songs and they start from nothing and they become something and, you know, you're, you're, I'm interjecting my energy into the atmosphere for people to, you know, receive that. So the fear of just not knowing if people would ever like love it um, the same way I love it was kind of like one of my, uh, my frustrations. Cause it's like, man, I got all these different stories I'm telling and, and things I went through that, you know, that has a lot of relatability. And I just wondered if the world would ever get a chance to experience that the same way I've seen it for others over the years and I ever like wondering could I be like that guy you know what I'm saying so not knowing if that's that opportunity to be afforded to over time I think that was my uh frustration but looking back on it I can say like you know I'm pr I'm proud of myself for not 
you know, giving up and continuing. And 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 it showed and through those, you know, through that it just kind of built the the strength and the courage and the, the know how to, you know, be prepared for what I am doing now, you know? Sure. Well, this is what I meant about that modesty and that humbleness. You you're willing to talk about growth and development and that process of, like I said, kind of kind of getting your legs in and facing the formidable, which is always acceptance. There's no wrong answer to this question, but for some people, it's lyrics. For others, it's music. What do you feel sort of comes first for you, or maybe it's a combination of both? One more time, repeat the question. Um, lyrics or music, what do you feel comes first for you? Um, or maybe you you sometimes do both, depending when you're developing a song. I would say both, only because I'm a real musician, so I hear music in a different way, like, all the time. But I'm also a lyricist because... Um, I'm a I'm big on the message. Yes. You know, and, and I think if, you know, when my fans to come and the ones that are just now meeting me for the first time, um, I think when people finally come to know who I am and peel back the layers from a standpoint of the instrumentation, because I think in today's time we're caught up in rhythm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people will hear the rhythm before they hear the lyrics. And then if they become a fan later on, they may peel back and be like, oh, you know what, let me hear what they're saying. And I think that's the part for me. I I, I can't wait um, for the masses to just be able to have that dialogue because if you're listening, you know, I, I pride myself on on storyline and just different things like that. So a little bit of both. So, you know, <laughs> even if I didn't go through it, I, I've seen it, I've done it, or I know someone that has. So I try to, you know, I look for relatability within the lyrics. So, you know, things of that nature. So a little bit of both, I'll say both for myself. Sure, absolutely. I want to pick a couple of songs that I hinted at you um, before. Um, the visual, the wording, the song and the message are just so poignant, but I wanted to get your interpretation. Uh, let's talk about Fireflies as an example. Okay. Do something okay. old, something new. Um, that, or so, when you're asking, you're asking just for me to break down just what was the significance to me of it. Exactly, because it, I mean, it's deep on multiple yeah. levels. It's very <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad you asked. Um, that record, man, that song is just, oh my God, it's special. Um, that was frustration. Mm -hmm. That was um, a lot of disappointment, a lot of uh, years of trying to figure it out um, no handouts. Like it was just me being, I guess I got to a point in my life where I was just, you know, fed up, you know? And, um, I think that was like really the birth of Jay X Hines, that Fireflies record. So to fast forward to, um, the visual, um, I'm very, you know, I'm spiritual. I grew up in church. So, you know, my connections and my, you know, I'm, you know, I keep those things before me. So like, even when it came to the visual, um, the way I was able to um, keep it true to what I felt the words were about. And I wanted everybody to see the detail of the fireflies. You know what I'm saying? I wanted certain things to be symbolic. Like I put the sandstorm in the beginning of the video because that was representation of what I felt I was going through and what I was coming out of, you know? And, um, and the fireflies was just what it, meant for me was just when I was in dark spaces and places, you know, that light was what kept me going. Sure. So that's really what the journey of that record is about. And um yeah, man, I try to I try to I try to create the most thought provoking things, yeah. you know? So absolutely comes across everybody's going to face these challenging times. What advice might you give to some young person in the industry that that's you know, eight years behind where you are, maybe even you know, 15 years and and trying their way to sort through ups and downs, rejections, trying to find management, leadership, direction. Um, take your time. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's nothing I've learned in my journey up to this point, it's just, um, I used to think taking your time was a bad thing. You know, I thought like waiting was like, oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want it right now, like, you know, but um, I equate it to, 
I equate it to the stairs and the elevator. Like, you know, some people have an elevator success, you know, and then you got certain people that just take the stairs. And I think, you know, by taking your time and you meet so many people along the way, you build character, you know what you want, um, you know how to obtain it, you know, you learn the things about the business to become successful because, you know, the more you know, and the more you have to bring to the table, it makes it a lot easier for somebody to want to come in and add value to what you're already doing, you know, hence my situation. So, um, yeah, just, just take your time. And, um, and when you meet genuine people, hold on to them. <laughs> so fast forwarding to a different side of your personality, at least in my interpretation, okay. which was funny, comical. I felt like we got to see a different side of you. Um, 1942 um, set us up for that and some of the thoughts okay. going through your head and yet a uh, phenomenal birthday anthem, which is what I think it can become. Yeah, man, um, that record, uh, another one of those are just special. Me just being who I am, um, I'm a, that's me. I'm a funny guy. I'm cool. I love comedy. Um, so I love stand-up. I love things like that. So even with the record, you know, I wanted to go against the grain a little bit because when you hear, you know, 1942, the first thing you think about is the tequila. And, you know, just for my generation, I, I wanted to take what was popular, but build it around a theme mm -hmm. and what one thing that we all celebrate every single day you know right. a birthday but how can i make this birthday record something that stands out and i think you know the visual was just another testament to man like if i show different phases of what would it look like if we was old you know what i'm saying like you know i think this generation lives by a live fast die young mentality but what if what if we started taking our time again and right. and value getting old right and i just kind of wanted to create a comical way to um bring in the audience to right. make it relatable um that's why i showed the youthful side mm -hmm. um and just fun from the standpoint of taking some of people's favorite songs that they connect, could connect to um just growing up and even some of mine and borrowing those pages out of that book to make one hit record so that's kind of like where that record just kind of stemmed from i wanted to make it a celebration of life so i think i accomplished that thus far so i'm ready for it to you know compete with the other previous birthday records so yeah, absolutely. yeah. clearly you come across as very wise beyond your years and also not afraid to be able to express your faith what challenges do you think you faced or that people may face in the industry especially if they're not a gospel artist or something along that line, Christian rock, whatever it may be, um, still being able to be comfortable in their skin and who they are in terms of their background and their faith, but yet you know, being able to be comfortable in a secular world. Um, I, I, I say this, um, that's because, you know, I, I, I know who I am, you know, I think, and that's just the significance of my journey, just having that opportunity to have a relationship with myself, you know, and, um, you know, I'm not against whoever, you know, you pray to or anybody prays to. I just know how I was raised and I know what was instilled in me and I know what got me to this point. So um, I feel like the dope part about it, I think we're living in a generation where people are looking to connect with an artist that still remind them of what they're used to, but still have that urgency of that connection to God. I feel like we lost that value. Yes. No one wants to think that's cool it's like you know not saying there's not people that's not doing it you know but because there, there's plenty of artists that are but you know how cool would it be if we had an example like man i can still be exactly who i am right my stand on what i believe in what i was taught and still influence the world and that's what my whole brand of making it cool to love again is about is you know loving myself first i had to love myself first to figure out how to better love everything else around me. So, you know, I think I just want to lead from that example. This doesn't make me perfect. You know what I'm right. saying? First right. and foremost, because, you know, a lot of people try to relate, oh, God and faith and things like that to perfection. But I'm, I'm far from that. It's just more of being an example and a light for my generation and show them 
there is a better way. You still can be that praying guy, that guy that has humility, that has um, stature and, and be an honorable man, you know? And it's what I want to leave with, accompanied by the music and the artistry and everything else to come. Sure, an entire package to say the least. Yes, sir. Um, when was that moment that you actually pinched yourself and said, I, I, I'm here, I, I really feel like I've arrived to feel more comfortable, not only in who I am, but I really see that, that this is a career that, that I can you know, be comfortable with despite the challenges that lie ahead. Um, I don't think I had that moment yet. I, I've had a lot of <laughs> close to it. I think it'll probably hit me maybe when I'm, I sold out a stadium and it's like, 50,000 like I you know I my mind is like always constantly there because you know to society that's what made it is but I would say up until this point just having the opportunity to um take my my craft to another level and being that you know Mr. Anthony Hamilton provided that platform you know is a blessing so sometimes it feels so normal because I've been doing it so long um, that I have to like realize like, hey, like, you know, you're really walking in what you prayed for, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, even though it's early, um, you know, I think I have a lot of those moments. I'm gonna have a lot of those moments. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're they're well on the way. So, you know, maybe we can revisit that question too at some point in time in the near future, so. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you all saw his modesty right there. This wasn't rehearsed. I had to kind of pull that out of him, right? Okay, you saw that for sure. I had to pull right. the whole piece. So tell us, because that's exactly where I was going. Tell us what it was like to get that opportunity to even be um, the first artist signed to his record label, minor detail that you didn't mention, and <laughs> work with someone like, like Anthony, interact with him. Um, it's, it speaks volume to just my story and my journey, man. Um, just, I've, I've, I've worked my butt off to get to this opportunity. Never knew if it would come, didn't know who it would come by way of, um, had plenty of opportunities of people that were interested. Um, those things just didn't fall through, just wasn't meant. Um, and to be the first, uh, to be the flagship artist of, of, of my music box, um, you know, it's an honor because I feel like it's something I earned. Um, I don't think you can be given this situation. You have to earn it. And especially being that, you know, I'm attached to a guy who legacy speaks for itself, shows a lot about what he believes in by putting me in that position. So it, it also shows that um, it's an honor and it's, and it's earned. Although it may come across as modesty, you're very comfortable. You said something very poignant there, although it's so casual to you. It just wasn't my time. It wasn't meant to be. Um, talk to us about those potential disappointments that people may face, other artists may face, and not um, being so upset or so depressed that they walk away because the temptations, of course, can be great running into walls, running into barriers, things not working out, money not being straight and being funny. These are just the realities of, of the business that make it really hard for so many to go where they want to go. And just touch us a little bit, you know, about that, how you didn't let it, you know, totally stop you just because you could have been with this person or signed with that person or this opportunity seemed like it was made for you, but then it didn't work out or somebody never called you back that promised to. Um. I would lie if I said it, it, I wasn't in a lot of dark spaces um, trying to figure out that time. I mean, I could look back on it now and the frustration was just, um, like I said, I, what I did was put it into my work ethic. I was like, you know what? That's okay. <laughs> no, it's not a bad thing. And I remember um, having um, this job where we was passing out flyers in the middle of the mall and like literally everybody would say no, 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 right? But the cool thing about it, when you got that one yes, it changed the narrative because of how much the commission was. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. That's the one way to do it, sure. You know, it, I, I tried to take those lessons and I was like, man, like, you know, so many people, it felt like doors was closing, but while it was closing, I just kept building. I just like, you know what? 
They made me mad. I'm going to the gym today. And my gym just so happened to be the recording studio and in the physical gym. Um, but, you know, I'm a gym rat, meaning like I, I lock in and, you know, I'm just like, you know what? All these frustrations, all these things that I'm feeling, all the things that I'm going through, I just put it into my songs. Sure. And craft. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to just, I'm going to keep working. And I just think I stopped caring about it not happening tomorrow. Right. And I think when I, when I let, when I let go in those aspects and that's when fireflies came and I look up now, it's like, I'm like, wow. Um, and it's still early. So, you know, Exactly. And we're the beneficiaries of that, that tough love and, and you staying on your grind and your 10,000 hours that you put in. That's a great transition for the title of our show. It's called Music and Medicine. When you hear those words, what does that mean to you? How does it speak to you? Music and medicine. Um, well, when I hear that, I hear music is medicine, meaning it's healing. Um, you know, it's healing in music. And that's why, you know, they say, uh, there's power in the tongue and words, um, you know, and I feel like music and medicine is healing. That's what I feel. That's my answer. Sure, absolutely. No, that's it's wonderful because it, it certainly is in so many ways. Um, we have to have a shameless plug. Tell us where you are, where we can find you, everything about you and what you're up to. And if I'm not mistaken, are you still in the Charlotte area? Or are you where are you based now? Okay, uh, yeah, so, you know, if you want to keep up with my moves, social media, uh, I'm J-X-H-I-N-E-S on all platforms, um, J-X-H-I-N-E-S, simple, making it cool to love again, but um, I am based in Charlotte, but um, I've been doing a lot of traveling, but my base is Charlotte, North Carolina. Sure, absolutely, and um, tell us about sort of your goal and vision just just over the next few months forget we talked about sort of the bigger things down the right. road but as we head into you know this time of the year and things like that what, what are some of your goals and vision um really just to um I'm, I'm gearing up for my uh debut album um so uh we've been just fine-tuning that uh making tweaks to that i just look forward to um just continue to like have platforms and opportunities like this for people to meet me, you know, um, um, and we're just building that exposure and that awareness um, leading up to my debut uh, album and um, really just, you know, continue to just stay involved in my community the best way I can um, and, and continue to just grow with no measures. It's all just, you know, just continue to grow. Absolutely. Uh, and I'd be remiss if I didn't do a big shout out to Andre, um, Chris, everybody helped put this together and things like that. And sure. um, I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. It is always a pleasure to have young talent, people that are not only sincere uh, in their words and their deeds, but really putting in the work as well. And certainly the way that you speak of your faith and how important it is for you to just, you know, be honest and true to yourself. And then what I really took home from this was um, the loving yourself and, and really just not being afraid to say, no, let me do the work, put in the time. That's really a message for all of us and everything we do. We need to slow down just a little bit. And uh, yeah. it was yes, sir. That's awesome. It was a pleasure and it's an honor to um, share this moment with you. And, um, and I thank you. And I look forward to, like I said, looking back on all of this and, you know, see how far we come from there. Absolutely. And we thank you for a wonderful soundtrack. It was just a pleasure getting to not only know you, but know your music and see where I was spot on and where I was wrong about um, the various sides of your personalities. I really love the work and it comes across. So thank you so much for your thank talent and your music. Thank you all so much. It's an honor. It's a pleasure. I appreciate you so much. Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. 